Season 101 series, in part 6, we want to see how we can add multiple items to SharePoint list. In the past video, we have seen how we can add one item, and adding more items to the same list is not going to be a difficult thing. But we want to add lots of records, like 200 records to the same list, and we see how it performs. So in this video, we start by updating the code so that it inserts multiple values. And we add a little bit of code to measure the time that how long it takes to do the job. Then we run and test the code and we measure the performance. After that, we go through the performance considerations. And then we add the same functionality, but this time with the server side code. And then we compare the performance. This is the form we built in the previous video. So if I go back to the insert button, you can recall probably that I have the code that gets a reference to a list called products and it inserts one item to the list. Now we want to add more items to the list. So to do that, I would like to add another button to the same form and I say add 200, for example, 50 items. I double click on it and I start adding the code. So it's exactly the same code that inserts one record. I would like to bring it here. And the part of the code that inserts the item is basically this part. I just enclose it in a for loop. For example, 250 records. And I just copy and paste this piece of code here. Now it's a great idea to change the title to, for example, uh, guid.newid.toString. So every time it inserts a unique value, and the quantity, let's generate a random number, for example, here. RND equals new random. And the quantity is going to be RND dot next any number between 1 and 1000. And for the date, I would say add rnd dot next anything between now and 10 months. Now we want to measure the performance and see how fast it performs. So I specify two variables of date time start comma end. So the moment that the loop starts working, I would say start equals date time dot now. And after it is done, I would say end equals date time dot now. And when the job is done, I want to show the difference between end and start here. So I would say end. Okay. I guess I got to define it out of this using block. And I come here and I say end dot subtract start dot total seconds dot to string. So the moment that I run this code, it should insert 250 values into a list called products. Let me create a blank list called, for example, new list. inside SharePoint. So it's going to be add an app. I already created a template for it, product list, and this is the list that I have. So if I get back to my code and I run it, now I can click on add 250 items. The moment that I click on it, A 
it took almost 14 and a half seconds let's remember this number which is quite slow but here's the point if you remember I told you before that this is the right and wrong way of writing the code the for each loop every time it adds a request to the package of my client context and execute query sends the request to the server I don't really need to call the CTX execute query 250 times I'd rather have 250 requests package in one client context object and I run it in one shot after the for loop is complete let's see the difference now so if I click on add 250 items now from 14 seconds to 8 seconds that's quite a difference so so far we learned that when we want to submit a couple of requests to the server from the client side object model we are using client context we package everything and when everything is ready we send everything in one shot and from 14 seconds to 8 seconds is quite a big difference now let's do exactly the same thing using the server side code because these videos are not meant to cover the server side code I already put the server side code together to cover this functionality I have a form I have a button on it and in this button it's gonna use the start and end same way but this time it's gonna use the server side code it's very easy code to write so if I expand the references I already added Microsoft.SharePoint reference to it I went to the top of the page using Microsoft.SharePoint and the rest of the code you can see it in the screenshot the only trick is that now because it's a server side code it has to be 64 bit to run so if I go to the properties and I go to the builds make sure you set it to 64 by default it's on any CPU after this part is done the code is ready to run I just put the name of the list here this is the list new list oh, by the way let's check and see if all the values are inserted yes we have it here from the previous code so I just come here and I add the new list here and I run the server side code and see how long it takes as you can see when it makes the connection to the server I don't count the time I start the timer from the moment that it starts actually adding the records to the list let's set this project as a startup project let's run it and I click on the button six seconds six seconds compared to eight seconds six and a half to eight and a half is not actually a big difference so still the server side code performs faster but we can somehow get close to the server side performance using the client side code assuming that the code is written properly conclusion a still server side code remains the fastest way to make changes in SharePoint see some assuming the code is written properly can provide performance close to the server side code thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed the video stay tuned and next video is coming soon have a wonderful day